want to start out by saying congratulations. We are at the end of the project. Typically, we would do a module on construction documents, but we do not have time for that this semester. So we're going to jump right into the renderings. So we're going to start out by talking about renderings. What makes a good rendering? I wanted to go through some renderings that I found on the internet and talk about what makes them good renderings. So you'll notice in this first one that there are cars, there are trees, there are some people in here. They have put a corner of a tree over here to help kind of like frame the picture. We have trees in the background. We have sky. The street's a little shiny, but the view of the building is nice. It's a nice perspective. It shows a car being more in the foreground here, kind of gives it a nice feel. This one has some really nice reflectivity in the glass where we're seeing the trees off in the distance. Again, landscaping, cars. I don't see any people in this one right off the bat. I do want you to have people in yours. But again, we have some nice framing with the landscaping around here. Makes for a very nice rendering. This one, again, we have people, we have cars that actually look like they're moving and look very realistic. We have a nice sky in the background. We've got some buildings over here in the background, some forefront to help give a little bit of color down here in the corner, some nice reflectivity in the glazing. Things like that are what you're going to want to look for. The view here has a nice distorted view. It's not a distorted view to where it looks awkward. It emphasizes the shape of the building. This one here, again, Again, we have some nice landscaping here in the front. We have a tree up here in the corner. This is really common to do something like this. More reflectivity in the glazing. We want to make sure that we're using coloring and stuff that fits with what we're trying to, to show. This one looks to have some special lighting. Probably was done with Photoshop. Probably really couldn't do something like this in Revit, but you'll notice there are buildings in the background. I'm going to show you how to put an actual background in and Instead of just having the sky that comes with Revit, you are going to be required to put a background in yours. So we will talk about that when we get a little bit further along. This one here is a nice one. It's more of a close-up of the entrance. You're going to have something similar to the entrance on yours that you're going to need to do. So again, we have people in the forefront. We have people in the back. We have lots of things going on. The more stuff that you have in your rendering, the more realistic it's going to look. We don't typically just have a building with nothing in it or around it. So those are kind of things that I'm going to be looking for. Again, we have a nice tree over here that's kind of shaping the edges. In regards to your interior renderings, kind of along the same lines. Again, we have people. Um, we have materials that blend well together. We have some artwork on the walls. I'm going to show you how to do that. We have stuff outside. You will see through your windows. I don't want to see blanks outside your windows if you have a window in your view. This one here has some nice lighting effects. Stuff on the shelves. If you're showing an area that has shelves, there needs to be stuff on the shelves. There needs to be stuff on the counters. Typically, there are books laying around in a library. This one here, again, stuff on the shelving, people in the background, things on the table, rugs on the floor, different types of seating, different types of lighting, so lots of different things. This one here is nice. You're getting exterior lighting coming in. If you have glass in your building, you will get the light from the outside coming in. If you have skylights, the lights will come down through them, popping out with some nice colors that kind of help brighten things up. So again, these are the types of things that I'm going to be looking for when I'm looking at your renderings. This assignment is coming out of your book in lesson 13, so if you want to go back and refresh, you can do that. Exterior renderings. Basically, an exterior rendering is a 3D computer-generated imagery of the exterior of a building. It's done using 3D software like Revit. 3D models of the building and a landscape around it are created first based on your drawings and your model is that you're doing, and then you add textures and lights and different things to the scene to get them to be rendered as an output. The output can be created photorealistic, non-photorealistic, depending on the requirements. We're going to be doing photorealistic renderings, both exterior and interior. The renderings are mainly used by architects, real estate developers, construction companies to market their existing or upcoming projects to owners, public, and the government. Another step beyond this is now virtual reality, of which you are very lucky to be able to utilize in your design process. 
process here at OTC. The next video that will go with this is going to be on how to do materials.